I thank God this morning. My husband's here. The Duncans are here. God connected us in love. Hallelujah. And I'm just so glad to see you this morning. Because some people say, oh, I'm going to come. But, and they don't come. But they showed up. <laughs> For that. Amen. 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 God is good. God is so good. Um, I just want to kind of take my time this morning. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I'm always nervous when I preach and everything. But I just wanted to thank God this morning. All that we go through. You know, some, some of us have gone through so many challenges. You know, mm -hmm. one challenge after another challenge, and but God is so good, yes, amen. Yes. Amen. And I, and I thank Him because I have been going through a challenge, you know, with these headaches and everything, and they come and then they go, they come and they go, and then going back and forth. But I thank God because He is a keeper, hallelujah. Yes. He said in His word that He will never leave us no. nor no. forsake us. So he's right there. So I wanted to sing this morning a little bit about his amazing grace. Amen? Amen. The song says, Amazing grace will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that put my liberty Okay, 
I'm going to be reading for your hearing. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When, Samar when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me to, for a drink? For the Jews do not associate with the Samaritans. Jesus asked her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from, from it himself? As did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to talk from the title this morning, Let Jesus Quench Your Thirst. Let Jesus Quench Your Thirst. The Greek word for thirst is dipsaw, meaning to suffer thirst. A person who painfully feels their want of something, eagerly longing for those things by which the soul is refreshed. All we, all of us, we all need water to live. Our bodies need to consume a significant amount of water to, to function properly. Our bodies are uh, made up of 60% water. We won't live long without consuming a healthy amount. It's only possible for us to survive in just a few days without water. So our lives depend on water to sustain us. Just as we thirst for water to sustain our physical bodies here on earth, we need Jesus, the living water, to keep us spiritually in this life and for the one to come, eternity. Hallelujah. We all have a thirst, but what are we thirsty for? <laughs> we all have a longing for something. You know, today, oh, we have access to so many things with, with technology. Uh, advertisements keep popping up on my phone all day long. You know, advertisements, it keeps us informed, but it also, you know, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves longing for the next best thing. We keep going back to be filled with things, uh, uh, but we, we're never satisfied because we always, you know, they're always coming out with something. The latest car, the latest iPhone, the latest this and the latest that. And before you know it, what we have, we look at it and we say, this is not good enough. And we're never satisfied and we keep on chasing, wanting more and more. Huh? But how many of you know this morning that Jesus is the only Samaritans, considering them a race 
uh, uh, considering them uh, half-breeds, spiritual half-breeds. When the northern kingdom, with its capital at Samaria, fell to the Assyrians, many Jews were deported to Assyria, and foreigners and the remaining Jews intermarried and resulting in a mixed race. Jews considered them unclean, traitors to their nation and to their God. They didn't even want to walk through their land. Uh, they even, you know, the Samaritans, they even had their own temple to worship in. And they had their own version of the Bibles. So, you know, the Jews ne never wanted to have any dealings with a Samaritan. So, you know, when Jesus came, he went through Samaria. <laughs> he didn't avoid it. He didn't go the long way. He went right through Samaria. Jesus did not try to avoid it. The Bible tells us Jesus needs to go through Samaria. And can you agree with me that this morning that whatever Jesus does, he's intentional about what he does.
hallelujah, even though her life was a mess, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Uh, this was his very purpose. This was Jesus' very purpose for coming to earth. Here at the well, you know, she went to draw water and Jesus asked her a question. He said, Jesus said, will you give me a drink? <laughs> will you give me a drink? She was so shocked. She was so shocked because typically Jews don't talk to a woman in public because it was, you know, known as bad behavior. You would never see a Jew talking to a woman. Huh? And then they considered them unclean, so they would have to, if he took uh, some water from her in the cup, yeah. it would be unclean. He would have to go through purification, <laughs> rituals, and everything else. But Jesus broke all of the Jews' social rules of that day. Huh? Huh? You know, oh, this was just unheard of. Hallelujah. She had no idea who Jesus was. She had no idea. You are a Jew. I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me to, for a drink? From the Jew's perspective, it would be no good reason for him even talking to her. And you know what? Some people look at us, ha, 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 look at us, and they judge us and everything. They say, why are you talking to her?
our thirst. Hallelujah. Jesus, he said that I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. Hallelujah. That's what he told us. Uh, this Samaritan woman, she said the well is deep and you don't even have a container. to. How are you going to provide this for me? Huh? But Jesus knows exactly what he is doing. Hallelujah. He says everyone who drinks this water will never thirst. Will never thirst. Hallelujah. Never, 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 never. Hallelujah. She was thinking, oh, this is natural work that I'm going to have to keep going and back and forth, back and forth. And you know, that's what we do. We have to keep going back and forth and back and forth for natural water. But you know what? He says, I'm going to give you this living water, but I'm going to ask you one thing. He told her, go and get your husband. Huh. Woo, 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 woo. Go and get your husband and come back. Oh, did he put the spotlight on her or what? Oh, he put the spotlight on her. She says, I had no husband. <laughs> she replied, Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. And the man that, that you're with is not your husband. What you, <laughs> she said, what you said is quite true. <laughs> Don't you know that Jesus, he knows all. Right. 
colleagues, and they, you know, they are they were calling for disciples. They were calling, come, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. And I wanted to come, but it just seemed like my feet was just stopping. Like I couldn't even move. I wanted to give my life to God because I felt the tugging of the Holy Spirit. I said, Oh, I gotta give my life to God, but I was I was afraid. But you know what? One day I said, I am just going. I'm just going to drop my past. I'm just going to go to the front of the church. And when they said, come to Jesus, I heard other people say this. And I, I said, oh, well, I'm going to say what they said. You know, they, they said, how do you come? You know, do you come by letter or do you come by Christian experience? I said, well, I do know Christ. I'm tell them. I told the deacon, I have my Christian experience. <laughs> What experience did I have? <laughs> but I gave my life over to the Lord, and, he, and they, they prayed that sinner's prayer with me. And they prayed, and my life was changing. My life was changing. I was not perfect. Yeah, I was still in the club drinking and everything. But you know what? The mothers of the church, they just kept on praying for me. They didn't say anything. They knew that because I was with their children, actually. Yeah. And they knew that we were coming in, and they knew what was going on, but they said, it's all right. And they had me in a circle and they was praying for me. Ah, hallelujah. And then when I heard the prayers of the mothers, hallelujah, after being out all night, huh, I said, Lord, change me. Huh, change my desire. Huh, take this away from me. I want to be more like you. Huh. I want to have my desires changed. Hallelujah. I want to be in the presence of God. I had to drop that top.
can't you know, always open the doors of the church because you don't know who God is touching through the word. If you're here and you feel the spirit moving, uh, you want to surrender? The reverend says something. Do you want to drop the pot? Amen. Amen. You can drop your pot today. Oh yes, God can use you. If you can hear, why don't you come and give me your hand and give God your heart? That's how you begin. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I'm going to, I'm going to have a word before we, before we go. I'll do the benediction in a moment. Right after service, I need to meet with uh, Sister uh, Deborah Roach, and then I have to meet with the scholarship uh, right after the church. But I want to say something about our preacher. She has a wonderful spirit. Amen. And I, I want to just salute you. Amen. Amen. And I thank all of you for being here uh, this morning at Metropolitan. And I know we come from different homes and different situations, but God loves us. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. People that don't know God love us, the charge falls to us to go ye into all the world oh. and spread the good news. You might not be a preacher, you don't think? Well, Give your testimony. That's your best sermon. Your testimony is your best sermon. You wake up in the middle of the night. And you can tell somebody what God did for you. Trust me, it works. Amen? With your head bowed on your ability, I'm not going to ask you to, to, to rise again. All things are clear between man and God. Uh, Deborah, I'm going to see you first, and then I'll see the scholarship. I want to say uh, this. Um, I want to thank God for bringing back Sister Caldwell went home to see her mom yes. for Mother's Day. And yes. She's back safely, and I'm glad to see her uh, in the congregation this morning. Yes. Gracious Eternal Father, we are blessed always. We have heard a tremendous word, tremendous preaching. Now, God, let us take it and use it. Not, not just on Sunday, but we got to be ready on Monday. No, you got to be ready Sunday afternoon when you leave this church. You got to be ye always ready. Yes. And then God, through the week, we're going to come to Bible study. Deacon Boy is going to touch our hearts again. And pray God that it's going to keep us until we reach the church again on Sunday. But God, we're going to praise you. Yes. I, I know Jesus went through some area. He, he had to go there. Yes. And wherever you are, God will find you. Yes. You can't hide from God. Okay. And so if you, if you put yourself anywhere where God is, He will bless you. He will find you. Yes, he will. And He will talk to you. Stop running from God. Yes. God, we will try to get in your way. Okay. Use us to your honor and your glory. Now may the grace of God, would you just raise your right hand in place. Now may the grace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest rule in the Bible with these His people. Henceforth and forevermore, let the church say.